Ha, Started early. So let's see if anybody comes. Anybody here? Ah, video okay, sound okay. Hey, Simon. Yeah, so I don't know how many we'll get. Oh, we got two. Welcome. Keep talking as it becomes a video. Yes, I am well aware of that. <laughs> That's and the reasons why I'm doing it to make a video uh, on YouTube on my YouTube channel which is the uh, thing that I've called it which is uh, talking really talking really yes talking really how considerate are you uh, so if you you uh, got that title nice lower third screen thingy yes it is quite knit i chose to have uh red because red is my favorite color although technically i should really have blue because it encourages people to purchase items if you have blue apparently according to psycho psycho lologists psychologists lologists those you know those, those funny people that were the um the degrees and stuff that they think they think that they know that they can get into your head. Uh, psychologists, that's the ones. So they they think that they can uh, understand your brain. They have a hard job with mine. <laughs> so it should really be blue, uh, but I've got red. So red is a, a fire colour. Hi Jamie, how are you, mate? All right, nice to see you here. Um, so we're going to be talking about the big question. Today's question is all about being considerate. Are you considerate? Do you have manners? Are you polite? This, this all came up because this week, well, several reasons this week, actually, I've sort of noticed a trend. Hello, Stuart Adamman. How are you, mate? Good. Nice to see you. So there's a trend uh, with having to produce evidence. Now, whether the government think that we're all stupid, which they probably do, because uh, they tend to make laws and bring in laws to govern us um, for, for the most idiotic things, for the most idiotic reasons, and now they're they're um, they're bringing these TV program adverts. I presume it's designed twenty something man rather than a twenty something woman, because it's all aimed about men having sex with women. And I can say that because it's actually a subject that uh, you can talk about on air. We're not going to be talking about. Um, going to Pattaya or anything like that. It's all about these adverts. Manners. Now, I'm 56 and I've been around the world. You know, I've seen cultures, I've seen lifestyles, and I've lived a life. I've been married. This is my second marriage so, so far. And the first marriage was 16 years. So I know all about sex. <laughs> well, I like to think do have you been watching big brother by the way anybody uh, anybody on here so far have you been watching big brother i know i know i know i've been desperate there's nothing on tv so i basically flick it on at 10 o'clock and they've been talking about sex on there can't bore you with the details because it's actually very intimate and they tend to um bleep it out so you can't hear what they're saying but you, you get the idea. So I'm just wondering, has manners gone out the window? Is politeness gone out the window? Because um, 
and consideration for other people has that gone out the window in this generation now if i had kids and is and is secretly a massive player <laughs> i don't know any practical demos tonight i don't think there will be stuart not unless you want to come on video and um teach me a thing or two maybe um and i'm certainly not going to give you a lesson on how to do it either not with that like on bigger brother when they had a banana uh, and a condom and uh basically got the chanel to uh lick this banana with the condom on uh we're not going to go down that route by the way just in case it's not an x-rated uh channel it purely is all about um finding out if we've lost this idea of consideration uh, and being considerate to other people and also manners and politeness because i think why do we need an advert telling men that and you shouldn't force sex onto a woman if they don't want to have it or if they're drunk or whatever why do we need to have an advert telling us that this is not not right and in actual fact, they've, they've changed the advert now to include a little bit of stronger message. They're saying in the advert, and I'm not sure if you've seen it or not, so I'm going to tell you anyway. Basically, they're using the R word, rape. Um, they're saying that if you if you do uh, have sex and with, without permission from a, from a woman, obviously, um, and they are incapacitated or they can't say no, or, or they can't say yes, or they say no, um then it uh, it boils down to rape now get me get me right or wrong but why do we need to have an advert telling us that this surely the bring you up your parents have this this the duty bound to instill some sense of manners and consideration for other people surely this is all about that and then I was thinking the other day and I, um, on this subject, because you know, with how I wanted to talk, really, I, I wanted to talk about s subjects like this because I can't see anywhere on the internet that, that other people were doing this sort of thing. And it would be lovely if I have some people to talk to on the video. So if you do want to, um, if you do have a, a video um, screen and things like that, an audio, there's a link at the top of the live chat come on and we can have a chat about it but don't worry if you don't um that's fine uh, the idea is i want to progress this channel to being a sort of a discussion channel hopefully maybe at some point we'll get some famous people to come on and um or if not we'll get simon lander smiles on i'm sure he'll be happy about that <laughs> I know he's um he's doing the um uh, what do they call it the, you know, the thingy on the bottom there he's doing that that for me today so thank you Simon very kind um it's probably because his wife's naked <laughs> I don't know don't know why I mentioned that actually uh, anyway so I was in the petrol station okay now is this me oh by the way do you like the shirt tell me down below if you like the shirt because it, it's actually from peacocks and i i wore one i think it last week um from peacocks and i went back and i bought some more because they were so nice they are so comfortable and uh, they'd be ideal for thailand when, when i go to when i go to uh back to thailand they'll be brilliant for that they're cotton and they're oh they're lovely so Simon says no, she's in the bath naked. Oh well, well thank you for telling me now. I didn't didn't really want to know that actually to be honest. I mean just telling me that she was in the bath was sufficient. I think you don't normally bath with your clothes on unless you chucked in there. Um so I think that's probably pretty obvious. <laughs> um was it free with five litres of oil? <laughs> no wasn't to buy it it's basically from peacocks uh, i think i've said that once anyway so if you haven't got it it's from peacocks and it's a woman's shop actually if you blokes if you go in there 
you'll find that most of it is women's clothes. And I know some of you are probably thinking, you know, the women's clothes um, for weekends. Yeah, you're probably right, I am. Anyway, so I was in this petrol station. Now, is it me or is it just me? Because I you know how they are in, in the petrol station. They have two pumps, one after the other, and a very narrow gap to get my. Usually there's a narrow gap. So I'm going to ignore that comment. Uh, the current come up on there, and I'm not even going to go down that because it was telling me that, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so there's normally a narrow gap by, you know, so if you want to go to the other pump in front, you have to sort of squeeze through. So sort of thinking considerate, um, considerate for other people. Now I'm thinking there's a guy filling up, just finishing filling up in front of me. And there's a, there's actually a blank spot just behind him. So he's he's gone to the further the further pumper ahead, and I'm I could go I could go into this pump here, uh, and for and then obviously that would mean and me would either have to squeeze by, or they'd have to wait. So here's here's what I'm trying to say to you about being considerate, and maybe it's just me. But I, I waited. I waited about maybe a minute, two minutes, and, and let the guy finish filling up his car. He, he, he finally, you know how slow they are, got into his car, started the car, put the seatbelt on, faffed around a bit, didn't even think about me behind, and then drove off. And I pulled up into the, into the bay, the, the second bay leaving the bay behind me empty for somebody who after birth filling up pulled up behind me so that i was sort of thinking yeah that was really really considerate i was thinking how considerate and then i thought if if that situation was the other way around would they do the same would you do the same probably not you think that we've got this culture where we tend to think of ourselves only ourselves and i think this is half half the problem with with society at the moment with all of the problems that we've got everybody just thinks oh well i'm out for me um where does this come from because being 56 if i had children and I had them age 25, for human's sake. If I now, round about, maybe 30, um, which is the age group that we're talking about, that these adverts are aimed at, I reckon, sort of 18 to, uh, 18 to 30 uh, age group, I think these adverts. Now, my values, my, my personal values, I would I would try and instill onto my children and I would teach them the the values of being considerate um, so other parents who are around my age of maybe 50 ish what the hell are they doing why are they not teaching their children or didn't te teach their children more respect Here's another question for you then. We've got like maybe five or six viewers uh, on here, and one of those is Simon. <laughs> so, not many this week. I know we had like maybe 10 last week, uh, um, maximum 10. Um, and I know it was, I know one of the normal people on here easily messaged, messaged me and told me that he's, he's not able to come on. So I do know that there are a few away and things like this, but um, from last week's uh, live stream, when we were talking about, um, what were we talking about? We were talking about um, being uh, Thai ladies and things about, well, I, I sort of changed the subject a little bit, didn't I? 
Um, I was going to mention the reason why I'm doing the live streams as well, because um, it's all about trying, trying to find a niche area. And I really do think that after sort of doing this sort of um, this, this sort of discussion thing that I'm trying to do at the moment, even though I'm discussing it with myself, because <laughs> there isn't anybody you know, on the screen down here. There's nobody down here. Yeah. Um, but if you want to want to come on, then click my link. Uh, it's halfway down now. Um, so the idea, you know, it's early days. I know that. But the point is that the live streams are quite good being noticed on YouTube because I'll, my numbers um, have sort of not really not really increased at all very much in the last week or two in fact they went down um, probably because I mentioned last live stream I mentioned Patreon of course people don't like people asking for help support and 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 the thing like this so they disappear quite well it's up to them you know, we didn't say that last week and we're not going to go down the same same route as this week but the point is that um the number of views for a live stream last week's live stream we had 163 um so live streams generate quite a lot of views and and the watch time if i recall is around about 2800 minutes or something like that so between the whole the whole thing or, or most of it so that's quite good i'm very very pleased about that because then it means that youtube will look at it and they'll go wow here's a here's a creator that we need to promote because that's what i need because if i just look at my normal video and i'll take the one that i did um about five days ago and it was the national trust and chapel yes simon so this live stream is going to go viral then well, one would one would hope so one would hope so why are you why are you taking away all your little messages don't you want to don't you want to i can read it out if you really want put it back in i'll read it out i know one of them was did i did i get this free <laughs> yeah and i got ripped off <laughs> yeah i did i got ripped off I should have had the oil. Um, so, the Sundom Chapel, which, to be fair, uh, oh, here we are. It was 22 minutes. And of course, we've got the age old thing about, you know, people don't have. Well, I don't. I, I disagree with this because I really truly think that this whole thing about people watching only three or four minutes of you of you, of you, of you, of you yes it comes up on the stats of that but I think that if you're watching a video and you and you're into it you watch it to the end now who's gonna watch a video unless it's really really bad gonna watch it for about a minute or two and then go elsewhere and that is just because if i if i i know i've said it before if i watch a video and I, obviously it has to be really really bad for me to click off it in the first place i wouldn't have clicked on it to watch it if i didn't like it or if i didn't like the subject matter then i wouldn't click on it in the first place so this whole thing about time it's just i don't get it it is 22 minutes that one a lot of work 
filming it because it was in Basingstoke way. But so I had to drive there, I had to film maybe two or three hours. Um, I'll come on and give me a minute. Okay, Jamie, love to. Yeah, please do come on and have a chat. Um, so and then then there's like maybe four, three or four hours of editing, coding and rendering. I mean, the rendering has been taking two or three hours. So you know, you're talking a long, long time. Video. Um, I could make it shorter, but it still involves the same amount of time to create it. These videos, these live stream videos, they're obviously live. So if I do an hour and a half, maybe today, half, and I've done it, I haven't got, I've got no editing, I've got no upload time i've got no rendering and they're actually i'll tell you how many views i had and then you'll see why live streams are quite good so that that sandham chapel national trust um property has had 52 views compare that 263 for around about the same period of time a week and you can see it's got three times more three times more views and i haven't looked at the watch time either on on the other video so i don't know how many minutes that's had, but it's not had 100 so you see that this is going to help the channel it's going to help me it's also something that i think is is quite a good idea um, as far as because nobody else is doing it and of course this week we've had the problem of, of people and I'm not going to mention names because I know that it's all about and I don't want to I, I don't like this this whole thing about creators need to support each other so I don't I don't I don't want to fall out with anybody however there has been this thing going around or alleging that they've been copying stuff at videos to be firm of my ideas my um gaff uh series that was copied the idea of that did i get my pants in a twist no i didn't i mean i didn't agree with it and i and i was actually really and sort of a little bit annoyed um because it was my idea and I and I had a unique idea so you can see that there's this whole thing about that's been going around creates I think um, thing a big problem um, but is this down to um, the original question which is um, consideration for other people and manners because one of the things that that came up was somebody again i'm not mentioning names that somebody put put a link on on um my um thing and set it to one of their things as it were my argument was they didn't ask for that they didn't ask permission to do that and it's just etiquette that i wouldn't again i'm considerate see i wouldn't go on somebody else's channel and um, drop my link on there to my channel without asking permission hello Jamie hi Andy you okay can hey, you hear good. Me? nice to see you I can hear you loud and clear good 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 so Jamie um have you been listening Do you know what we're talking about uh, I missed I missed the conversation you're on right now but I've listened to a bit yeah yeah well it's basically just carrying on with the uh, the whole um manners and consideration thing to do with there's been some thing this week about people complaining um they are copying videos ideas and i've said 
some of my some of my serious ideas um, <laughs> have been copied. Yeah, and uh, I'm not happy about it, but I haven't made a uh, song and dance about it. I haven't got my knickers in a twist. You know, if they want to copy it, then that's fine. I, it's I think, not polite. I think, I think one of the things you have to do, though, as a creator, because I mean, I don't, I don't create videos, but I, I create websites. I do development things, and you're always going to get trends that are happening. In, in sort of creative circles and people follow those trends you know if one thing is if one thing is successful um in a certain area then people will emulate it and i would i would personally take that it, it, I, I get that it can be frustrating but it's it's also it's also what drives you to make it better it's it's about um you taking that as uh you know a sign of um of endearment of what you're doing you're obviously doing it right if it's attracting them isn't it it is a form of flattery as well isn't it so um barry smith says hi andy you can't really copy people on here nobody owns anything you're quite right yeah i mean there is no original ideas anymore because they've all been done i mean you think about something you think an idea and then you research it and you find it was 20 other people have done it so even my idea of my gastronomic uh, reviews and and the way that I did it isn't unique, and I probably borrowed it from somebody else. So that's why you can't really argue about you know copying things. And but is it is it manners to ask somebody? You know, this is what I'm trying to get at. Have we lost this idea of of consideration for other people and manners? What do you think? I think I think it, I mean there's a different there's a difference in between modeling what you're doing on somebody and then blatantly ripping them off if you get what I mean yeah so it's like I I, I remember one of the <laughs> one of the first websites that I ever built that I was proud of the kind of and you'll know this as somebody who builds websites when you you kind of get to that point where you you build something and you think actually that looks quite good you know and I, I remember doing that, and when I look back on it now, there was so much I copied off other people. It, it, I mean, like pixel for pixel copied off other people. And uh, I would be ashamed to do that now, but have, um, but like, you know, back then when I was learning and learning the ropes, it was kind of acceptable to me. Now, it wouldn't be something I'd do now, but back then it is. And, and I think that's... You know, a lot of the Thai creators especially, um, which I know you sort of verge on that where you do a bit of everything, but it's I think the thing is with the Thai creators is they are they're all babies at doing this. It's not nobody's been doing it long term. So everybody is learning. So I wouldn't I wouldn't read too much into it. And if somebody if somebody doesn't ask you uh, and copies you word for word, then yes, I would be a bit like that's not right. Mm. I think it especially when it's a link or something like that you know when you've got a, when they when they're promoting their their link uh, their website or their their channel on your channel and they come on there and they drop it on there without permission and it's blatantly advertising their channel yeah i mean i for me and this is the thing that i think i don't know whether you guys have looked into it or not but the one thing that the thing that i think the whole um all of you guys are missing if you if you aren't already planning to do this is is kind of um podcasting so podcasting has moved from an itunes audio sort of thing into a video thing and, and probably one of the best examples is somebody like joe rogan or somebody like that yeah he gets a million plus views every night right now okay he's got famous people on uh, or, 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 or at least D-less celebrities coming on. But I think if if there was a good weekly podcast that just took one subject, whether that is in the Tide era or something else, it doesn't really matter, uh, and just hammered it, then that would be a great thing to watch. And I'm not talking 20 minutes. So, I mean, Joe, Joe Rogan's podcasts are like four hours. They sit down for four hours and discuss a subject. 
And I, I mm. think that's what it needs. Now, I, I, I mean, from my perspective, it's a little bit... I, I said this to Pompoy Ferrang because I, I did his website for him, is different. I think a lot of people in the ties era always talk about uh, bars and girls and all that sort of subject. And I'll be honest, I, I love Thailand, love listening to Thai vlogs, but I'm not interested in girls or bars. Couldn't care less about them. I have no interest in them whatsoever. I'm a happily married man and I don't drink. So there's a lot of people who's just interested in Thailand and certain, you know, interactions in Thailand as well. Yeah. So you're interested in everything apart from that, really. Yeah. Everything the, the 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 bad side of it, which is exactly like me, because I really don't, I don't, I don't particularly enjoy the bars, and because I obviously have a Thai wife, so I don't, I don't really need to go to the bars and things like exactly. that. Exactly. I mean, it's the same with myself. I'm not. You know, I, I enjoy Simon's stories because they're kind of stories, if you get what I mean. You know, I'm, that's not what I mean. But the whole, the whole, the attraction to Thailand to me isn't drinking and meeting young girls all day. <laughs> that that doesn't that doesn't make me yeah. kind of yeah. interested. So, so there is actually an area that we could concentrate on and do do some some uh, some live streams about. So that's really helpful um, helpful yeah, information. And, and, and it sounds uh, it sounds nuts, but somebody like myself, so like I'm not far. I'm I'm probably about twelve months away, maybe two years away from actually moving to Thailand full time, retiring and going. And and the thing is, is like uh, when I think of or where do I pay my rates? I've never heard anybody talk about stuff like that. Where where do you know where do you pay your water bill? Where do you go to actually do it? Stuff like that. Actually living in a foreign country especially one like Thailand where that language is quite difficult to understand. I understand a little bit, but not a lot. And, you know, that side of life, other than the bars. And also you have all the legal stuff as well, like, you know, certain ways of doing things. And uh, obviously not, not only the places where you have to go, but also the processes that you have to follow. The the palms you have to sort of... And... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a really good idea. I think that's something we can look at doing. Yeah. Um, Barry Smith says, um, I drink, but agree with Jamie that I'm not bothered about the bar scene. And then um, uh, Landa Smile says, you're a secret jib fan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Andy paragliding in a tie shirt. That's a good suggestion. I, I think I, I haven't done paragliding, so I think that's probably something I could do. <laughs> yeah and uh barry smith said uh earlier that uh my my gastronomic um series my gastronomic gaffs is uh is unique because we know we know that you're going to get some tam and something else <laughs> that's yeah. stereotypical it's pretty much the same as what i do that <laughs> <laughs> but yes yeah. Now the the other uh, so we're talking about today is consideration for other other people. Have we have we lost that idea? Uh, where has it gone? Why are our children of the age of between twenty twenty and thirty? Well, how old you are, uh, Jamie? But the, there seems to be this this need for TV adverts where they they're guiding you about things not to do in in what should be areas of life that your parents should have taught you about uh, taught you about so what do you think about that then jamie Is, um, would think, you uh, to me i mean i don't open I'm the not, door I'm, for a lady I'm, well yeah i would right i am of that generation my parents brought me up to be that way ladies first yeah. uh, manners uh, try not to swear around ladies although i do fail at that a lot um yeah. Yeah, the, the whole the whole shemangle that's the way i was brought up and if my if my if my mother saw me even today if my mother saw me not acting in that way in front of a woman she would she would she would nail me for it she'd be all over me mm. so the thing is is uh i i am from that generation uh, i think i don't want to i'm not going to get political over it but it's kind of for me 
for me, it's a, it, it's a whole nanny state thing. Is it's kind of people, people, I think, mm. I don't want to say the whole of the youth generation because it's not true, but I think it's definitely people need to uh, take accountability and responsibility for their own lives. You know, I can remember being a teenager. I can remember being in situations with girls where I could have took advantage, I guess, if I wanted to and didn't, you know, and I didn't because it's the right thing to do. Um, and, and, and having to say that out loud, uh, I think it's a bit ridiculous myself. I, I think it's, yeah. uh, I think it's a bit silly. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you another thing as well is, have you come across, um, which happened to me not so long ago, have you come across one of these girls who you hold the door open and they sort of blind you for it? Mm. Where that I've had no. that recently, and that was a, a very strange experience. I was kind of like, "Don't get that at all." I I just do not get where you can go with that. Mm. <laughs> so I found that very strange. No, it's again, it's like a reverse a reverse manners and consideration thing, isn't it? So it's the opposite way around. Um, the idea of of opening doors is is something that you do because you because you've been taught it it's polite um things that i did when my thai wife came here for the first time to make her feel happy was i i i i got some um her family enlarged and put into frames and put up on the wall and i got i got some uh, people that were local who who i uh, had to actually find who had Farang and Thai cu couples for her to go out with, to with and talk with, because I knew that when she was here, there was just me and her. Yeah. She would be bored out of her head. But is that consideration for, you know, because there was a TV program um, on on one of the channels, and one of the guys who was who was American, I think he was. No, no offense to Americans watching this, but he was American. He went and got a Thai wife, took her back to his house, and basically said, "Here's the kitchen. Get on with it." And he had no consideration for her feelings at all. Well, I've, I've, I've. I mean, I touch wood. I like to think that my what, my 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 what, um, married life is is a successful. A successful married life as such and and what i would say is i think that is because my my wife is thai um she's she's quite educated for a thai uh, lady um but what i would say is i treat her no differently than i would treat a western girl hmm. she's exactly i treat her no differently now i have met people when i've We've sort of been out to these. Um, uh, have you ever been to one of these sort of Thai get-togethers? These sometimes have, and uh, you know, around Songkran stuff like that, where the you know they'll have a bit of a party and a bit of a show and things like that. And I've been to that, and I I've just sort of sat there and listened, and I I have literally heard people talking to their wives like like they were a dog or something, like they owned her. Yes. And 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 I and I I hate to hear that. Uh, but it does go on, and it's and it's quite it's quite common. It does and, it does go on. It's quite common. You're right. And and when I hear, um, when I hear people talking, uh, especially when their wives go away, the wives will go away, and then the men will sort of talk, and you'll you'll get this guy who'll just berate his wife completely. Oh, this stupid blood ties, blah 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 blah. And and I'm kind of sat there thinking to myself, well, do you think your relationship is like that because that's the way you treat her? You you treat her like a second class citizen, so she's gonna act like yeah. a second class citizen, um, and 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 that's I never say it, but that's what's always going through my mind. <laughs> you get what I mean? If you treat, if you treat me like that, I'm gonna act like that. You know what I mean? I'm gonna act horrible yeah. towards you. So so that's the way that I see it. But it's um, mm. it, it's I've met both. I've met both. I've met good guys and bad guys. But I guess you can do that everywhere. So Barry Smith says, I think this area is a bit complicated. I hold doors open for anybody, not just women. I also say thank you loudly when other people don't do it for me. Quite right, Barry. Yeah, I mean, I. but then 
you know, don't know their values, do you? You don't know why they haven't held the door open. They probably haven't had the the uh, growing up experiences of holding out open doors. I think it's a cultural thing as well. Some of the other cultures, they have different ideas about that. So you may find that if they are of a different culture, that might not be something that they do. Um, but people get offended by it. And um, as you say, I think this makes as well a bit of a too much of a, a nanny thing regulated and told what to do and there's no there's no real consideration for other people i don't think i mean that's the, the whole the whole um i mean i i i don't want to go too deep into this but i was feel free I not why well, <laughs> i've got to be careful what i say here, sort of legally um the last employed job so the last job where i was actually an employee uh which was a long time ago um i well it wasn't that long ago it was about about four years ago um i was in i was in a quite a high position in in this company and i effectively had a bunch of people who had just been able to do whatever they kind of wanted for quite a long time and and strangely enough it actually it's it it was a government organization should we say and um i had this gentleman who was just he, he, he was working four days a week he was contracted to do five he, he worked four days a week just had a day off every week it didn't tell anybody you know, that's what he did <laughs> um so that's the st so that gives you a kind of baseline for where we're at and I had, a, I had a lady who was, all she did was just talk all day. She just didn't do any work at all. And eventually it got to a point after a couple of months, my, my, my direct, the, 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 the director basically said to me, he said, look, look, he said, these people aren't used to being managed. So he said, just um, go gentle with them. And I said, okay. So after three months of trying to push them in the right direction, very gently, I turned around and I said, uh, and I said to this lady, um, "Look, I've I've given you a chance to do this, this, this. Listed it all off. Went nuts for hours in this big talk, this big sit down talk, which is not usually what I'd do. And eventually, I just turned around and I said, "Look, you can give me every excuse in the world, but all I want you to do is just to do your job. Just, mm. just do your job, finish your job." And um, for that, she put me in a complaint. And two weeks later, I was fired. God. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so that's that's where, uh, and the reason was, uh, and I do mean, I, I genuinely mean it when I say I was as gentle as it could possibly be. I, I really kept it calm, wasn't nasty, didn't persecute anybody or anything like that. And that's what I mean by people are so scared of so, social interactions that could be perceived has been too, you know, over direct. That I think that's part of where your manners have gone. People are scared to say yeah. something. Um, I often, I, I, another one that I remember, I remember being in first aid training, and about ninety percent of the room refused to do it because they were scared of getting sued. You do that, don't you? You have something to do with first aid training, don't you? So, you you, you might have experienced that yourself. Is people wouldn't do it. Mm because they didn't want to know because if it did happen in front of them they might get sued and i was i'm like um there is there is a, a thing about you know if if you do nothing then you're okay and if they die it's fine because you know but if you do something and then they still die then you're to blame it's like you, know, you can't win but inaction isn't isn't always best uh in that sort of situation uh with first aid and they even stopped doing the uh breaths part of it they said sorry the um yeah the breaths they started saying that you could just do the heart the heart palpitation you could just do that yeah and it was I, I, about mouth-to-mouth just... -mouth contact <laughs> I, I just think if somebody was if some if somebody was in front of me and dying I, irrespective of who they are what they are what, what the consequences are going to be in the future i'll deal with that later uh, and i mean the way that i see it is 
it, as a general rule of thumb, this this country is, you know, whatever side of the political spectrum you sit on, it's it's a reasonable country. We don't live in some weird state here. You know, it is a reasonable land, and I think um, the the fact is that like. I think you'd have to, I think you'd be very harsh to get a judge who would see you as some sort of threat to that person who nearly died. You get what I mean? So so that's the way that I look at it. But it's I was quite surprised when that happened. I was quite surprised a lot of those guys turned around and said they wouldn't do it. That what was actually going yeah. through my mind was what, what happens if it's your mum? Yeah, exactly. That's what was going through my mind. I'd want to I'd want to so, know if it was one of my family. Barry says, uh, "Good Samaritan laws would trump most inactions." So yes, um, it's very difficult to know in a situation. I mean, I've done first aid training, um, for, you know, f because I teach I teach uh, martial arts and all this, so I have to be qualified. I've never used it, luckily. Touch wood, you know. But if it came down to it, then I probably would use it and hang the consequence because I let somebody die. Shouldn't even know legally, you don't have to do anything. You just have to make the phone call. That's all you have to do is make the phone call. Um, you know, how could you live with that? I well, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you what I've done is I, I mean, this was a very long time ago, but. Uh, it was back when I was because I, I originally started in life as an engineer and they gave us um, first aid training when I was an engineer and uh, I must have been in my early 20s and on several occasions I've come out of nightclubs and there's been somebody who's got way too drunk sitting in the corner of the street you know at three o'clock in the morning yeah and I've put them I've put them in the recovery kit position do you get what I mean? I've done that. Yeah. Once or I've done that once or twice, just just so they don't choke on their own whatevers. You know, I've done that once or twice. So saying that you don't even want to do it, I don't. I don't get that at all. I don't. I, it's yeah. a very strange thing. Yeah, um, doing the first aid course in the first place is is the other question. If they if they're not going to take part in it, they all know it's a, a practical thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got to be honest. Like, I mean, when I was. When I was a when I was a young man, uh, first aid and health and safety. I mean, it just uh, when I was an engineer, people just used to ignore it. The amount the amount of people I can picture now standing there with a piece of asbestos, just cutting it <laughs> with no <laughs> whatsoever, just going for it with a saw. So like it's uh, it, you know the world has changed a lot now. I mean, I know I know the kids are really into it. Like my my nephews. Um, in a trade and and he's he's all for it he's always got masks on and knee pads on and all sorts of stuff is that is that a sign of western uh progressment or is that is that something else like health and safety because obviously you're talking about when in the 50s and 60s the equivalent of what's happening then is is actually sort of how thailand is now uh, no, no, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly when it changed. Is when companies start getting sued. Yeah. When it started so financial. Yeah. When it started costing them money, and and I think I seem to remember it being the coal miners who really dented some pockets there. They were the first one with the coal dust. When they started actually connecting a financial value in between injuries to people. That's when that's when companies started turning around and saying, "Right, you can't you can't do this job without actually wearing this stuff, and if we catch you not wearing this stuff, we'll fire you." Yeah, uh, you know, and that's when it kicked in, and that's when it, and it's really grown up from then. And I mean, I have seen some, I have seen some stuff in my time where I've thought you're going a bit over the top there, like you know, what I mean? <laughs> but it's, but it's, I, I don't know. I guess it's better safe than sorry, isn't it? It's one of those. It is when you when you go to Thailand and you see things that they do there, and you think, "Oh my God, we never do that in the UK," and you think, oh, "How do they get away with it?" But it's normal for them. Um, maybe they're sort of maybe twenty years behind us um, as far as that's concerned. And maybe in twenty years' time, legislation that we have 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think Thailand's really... I mean, once again, I, I don't want to get political on your channel, but I don't think... Um, I don't think Thailand's... I don't think Thailand's kind of had its... It's kind of workers' rights kind of revolution yet if you get what i mean which always comes with capitalism you know uh, and thailand is growing as a as a, as a, cap, a capitalism country so eventually that'll start to kick in it'll just take time you know that's that's the difference yeah, between, right. that's the difference in between places like uh thailand and china is china you'll probably never get that until the government changes in thailand i think eventually you'll start to get those employment laws where safety and and and, and workers rights kind of come in do you think that the asian countries do they value life less than western world yeah basically as a short answer mm. uh, i don't think yeah the the do you think that's related to the religion buddhism do you think that's because they think well it doesn't matter if i if i die now i just come back as another person and just carry on no i think it's it's like you say it's it is it's just the same as it was in this country is that um you know nothing really happened until it financially started to hurt hurt companies and I'm not saying that morality doesn't play a question in that. I think, don't get me wrong, there's, there's companies out there who don't, you know, they don't want their staff to get injured or die. You know, that's there's definitely companies out there that are like that anyway and always have been. But um, I think once it starts to affect you financially, and if, you know, the other thing is as well, is that if, you, if somebody gets hurt at work, um, you can... I mean that can be a serious dent in a company now in a in a company's finances a serious dent it never used to be it used to be a couple of grand and see you later uh, you know like now it can be hundreds of thousands of pounds if it's really serious and i think until that happens until the courts in places like thailand china and and, and others um start to connect those dots you won't really get that change I I, but it'll, it'll happen it always happens eventually it happens. slowly but surely yes maybe over the next 20 years or so barry has uh, he's been talking about thailand versus china already this week and he doesn't think that there's much difference to be honest because the uh presumed talking about the uh uh the idea of you know everything really <laughs> i mean the we're well we don't want pinpoint countries you know some some are actually quite uh bad and some are okay aren't they i mean as far as the asian yeah i mean area. what the, the the weird phenomenon with thailand or or what i think is a weird phenomenon at least is that um it, the, the thing that's happening Human rights the thing that's happening here in in britain is that you've got a, a super city in london and the rest of the company and the rest of the country is starting to is starting to suffer because of it and and that is because everything is just based in london you know apple just set up in in london they just bought battersea power station to go and put their headquarters there and it's kind of like couldn't that have gone somewhere else isn't there anywhere else in britain that could have gone you get what I mean, and just I don't. I don't think there is anywhere else in Britain. Is there? It's just London. That's it. Well, that's nobody, it. Nowhere else. Yeah, but the the school, the best school for computers, the best school for computer science in Britain, yeah, is Manchester. Right. Right. So the skills are in Manchester. So all those people from who've been to Manchester University are going to go down south now to go to work. So you see, my. And when you look at Bangkok, Bangkok's very, very, it's, it's, it's weird because it's backwards because it should really be behind us, but it's actually in front of us. You've got this massive super city in Bangkok that's in certain parts super wealthy. I mean, you know, it's wealthier than we are here. And then you've got no middle class and you've effectively got poor and super rich. Poor. Yeah. You've got super rich and poor and that's it. There's not, there's nothing in the middle really. And, and, that they need to work on that in the same way we need to work on it we we need to get that change in there so the rest of the country the, the wealth can spread up north and and into scotland um 
in in this country. North, I think. Yeah. And I think the thing needs to do the same in in Thailand. It needs they need to spread that commercial way up where wealth outwards. Barry says he lives up up north, and they've been suffering for years. So yeah, it it, it seemed to be revolving around London. That London has everything. London has transport. They say, oh, the UK transport situation is really good. Yeah, it might be in london yeah. everywhere else it's no you can't get a bloody bus anywhere or, you know rubbish uh, you know i do a lot of miles and it, traveling on the road it's awful it's just getting worse and worse they want to build roads the thing, the thing for me i mean yeah you know um the, the bit where we've missed and, and 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 we can learn from the americans here which is you know uh, something to pick up on there's a reason Silicon Valley is in California, and that is because the University of California is a computer science university. So what we need to do, and we don't really do this to the same scale in Britain, is we need to turn our universities into specialist universities. So a perfect example of that is, is Newcastle. Newcastle is a school for doctors if you want to be a doctor well sorry if you want to be a surgeon you go to newcastle that's where you go to be a surgeon now we want to do that with our universities and if we do that with our universities that will attract businesses to different areas of this country the thing is with me is like we've got so i i don't live that far from liverpool and our, the university up here specializes in art and it specializes in computer science yet it stood on one of the biggest if not the biggest maritime docks in europe mm. yeah. and it's kind of like well why don't you do maritime stuff why don't you specialize in building boats or or mm. maintenance of boats and all that kind of stuff and and that's that's what i don't get is these areas can specialize in certain subjects the chinese have just thrown a load of money at liverpool yet there's no skill set here to feed that and and that's what we need to do in britain it's the same thing we need to do in bangkok i don't think we make boats anymore do we though or ships we don't make them anymore in this country we do, we do, do, we, we, do. Made, <laughs> we make any yeah if you go over if you go if you go to liverpool and you stand on the docks you'll see them on the wheel they make all the bat. they make a oh, lot right. of bat they make a lot of battleships and submarines there and um but you've also you got my battleship what you've also got is you've also you've got to remember it's not just about making them it's about maintaining cargo yeah so yeah. you've got the you've got the big super tankers that come in and the super tankers need repairs so they're all the maritime engineers who do that sort of thing plus like mm -hmm. uh, i mean you don't really think about it but you know i've got a friend who's a tugboat driver he earns seventy thousand pounds a year as a tugboat driver it's a good they're good jobs they're careers to have not just mm. Yeah. you know it's not it's not it's not a it's not a, a job it's a career it's a proper career to have yeah yeah and that's what we want to be creating for us uh, alex Irvin says hi i've been to coast summit twice uh his dad lives there and when he when he got on and off the boat from van Fay to coast summit you have to jump off the boats ramps or anything <laughs> health and safety issue i think uh Going out the window, mind you. That happened to me in um, where was it? Uh, what's North Africa? Name some name some countries. North Africa. Oh my God, Morocco? Egypt, uh, Morocco. Yeah, Morocco. Got on a boat there and you had to jump in into the water and go on the beach. Bloody nightmare that was. Um, I did. I, I, yeah. Do you know? I, it? I remember that in Greece. I did that in Greece with. My, I remember when I was a kid, and I remember my mom who's like, she's not the most, she's not the most, uh, should we say, um, uh, agile woman in the world, and she had to jump off the back of this boat, and it was a big boat. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. a little boat. <laughs> I was kind of. I think because uh, I was quite young then. I was so you know, um, and we went there on holiday with the family and two big Moroccans carried me from the boat to the to the shore it was like whoa you know 
But that's what they did. That's what they did in, in them days. That's what they did. You know, like carried and even even in twenty twenty eleven when I went to um I went to Moscow. The two big Russians carried me down the stairs from the plane. I mean, I was like, that was not long ago. That's like five years ago, and yeah. age fifty two, and they were carrying me down the stairs. Because they had think, no no li no lifts or no um, ramps or things. I think that's definitely a, a worthwhile project that you've been doing with the whole, you know, traveling as a disabled person. I think that's I think that's um, that's a good that's a good subject to try and cover. It's not something that I can I've seen a lot of. Let's put it that way. No, yeah. there are there are a limited number of people doing uh, personal. Um, trips like their own trips and they're documenting those uh, but there's nothing really where like what as you say like like myself where i'm trying to do as many things as i can to show other people what it's like because like, especially the national trust um, properties they do make this effort to to be as as accessible as they can Considering buildings are not very, um, but, but even sprawled by able-bodied people, so there's nobody there sort of saying, "Well, maybe you need to have a ram that's a bit longer, or a bit, you know, less steep." Because uh, I've had that many times where they where they say, "Oh no, you can go up that easy." All right, and it's like a ninety-degree <laughs> angle. Yeah. so yeah i think you're right i um, thanks for that because that's really useful and i've had a lot of feedback from people um you know so i'm going to carry on doing it it's just the the whole f process of making these videos as i said earlier that one that i made 22 minutes long it's not it's not very long compared to some that i've done but it's also not very short to have the to give everybody the idea of the whole trip you have to have a length of time you can't just say to me that's too long because you just lose the value of it um yeah but what 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 i would do is i was you yeah, because i'm not sure i'm not sure whether you guys know this but like nine about 99 percent of the content that you see online is not actually produced by the person who maybe is front in the website so if it was me one of the things that i would do on your on your on your site was would i i would have a page straight away do you want to be a reviewer all right yeah and I, I and i would be trying to get content from other disabled people you know if you're you know if you're up in scotland and you're going to edinburgh castle give us a review you get what i mean it's kind of yeah get, get them Get them in the case and uh, i mean there's only going to be a certain amount of people who want to maybe make a video because videos it's it's kind of it's quite intrusive if you get what i mean but there'll be a lot of people who want to yeah. write for you there's a lot of people there's yeah, a lot of sure. people out there who love to write so i i would definitely um try and encourage that it's a good idea yeah i mean i choose for that because that's you know that's quite helpful. Um, I do actually do reverse of that. I, I actually write and produce for other um, similar yep. sort of sites. You go into my Andy Wright online, sorry, Andy Wright Travel. Um, you'll see on there that there's a little page on there where I've listed the, the uh, uh, websites that I can I actually write for and um, I make videos for the the idea of those is that they're already doing exactly what you just said so it, it, you know, i don't know how much scope there is for me to do the same rather than looking at other niche um areas i, I, I could I, concentrate on i absolutely guarantee right and, I, and i'll be surprised if i'm wrong here that if you went on to somewhere like um upwork or somewhere like that and built a profile a decent profile on there as a disabled writer stroke journalist reviewer sort of thing yeah said that you you can go to places that they ask you to go and do a review on it as a disabled person i absolutely guarantee that i reckon you'll be you'll get a lot of a lot of traffic. Right. so what's that then that's 
Upwork. Yeah, if you go to so Upwork's a freelancing website. So like, if you, um, you know, you, a lot of it is web technical things, but uh, and a lot of it is writing. But you see, you have right. a, you, it, it, you have a unique perspective that, um, you know, even the best writer would be hard to emulate because they're not going to be yeah. in that position. They're not going to know things that you know about being a disabled person and what, what that's like, if you get what I mean. You'd have to experience it. So the thing is, is like I, I would build your whole profile around that. There's there's mm. a lot of businesses out there, you know. Um, I'm just trying to think. You know, say, say like a, a sports center or something like that. How can you call yourself disabled access when no one who's disabled has actually come and said, yeah, this is pretty good, or this is bad, or I'd change this, or your lockers are too high, or whatever the case may be. You get what I mean? You know, that, yeah. that's, that's a definite, there's definitely a service industry there for that kind of person. There is a few high profile people. Um, I can't remember his name. Oh, Mick um, Pollitz. He's a TV uh, presenter. You've probably not heard of him, but he's. He's a wheelchair user. Um, he, I looked at him, him because I was looking at trying to find somebody to come on this channel to chat to, and uh, he does all of that stuff that you run about there. So right. going around offering the service of, you know, going around reviewing um, businesses and training uh, staff members in disability awareness which but i do all that as well so what, what one of my best one of my best friends uh is a is a barrister owns his own company now um but back then he was working for somebody else and um he kept getting um he kept getting these jobs you know you know where like a footballer had been speeding or something like that and then they'd, they'd be doing 120 miles an hour down the m6 and and you see it on the front page of the paper where they've got off. Well, he was yeah. the he was the guy he was one of the guys doing that, and um, he wasn't particularly. I don't think he was particularly an expert in in most or, or in in driving law or motoring law or anything like that. I think he just knew he knew what he knew. If you get what I mean, and he rang up the BBC and said to the BBC, do you want a quote? Uh, sorry, do you want do you want me to give you a quote on this story on parking tickets, yeah? He's now, yeah. He, he now owns the biggest motor and defence law, law company in the country. Just mm. from that one interview, from that one interview, that jettisoned his whole career. He's, he's, he's on Good Morning Britain. They even made a TV series about him not so long ago. All sorts of stuff, just because he became that go-to guy for driving stuff. Yeah, that is exactly what you need to find. It is that key um, promotional thing. And is it like, or is it keeping on doing what you're doing and hoping that somebody sees it? Um, well, well, what he did. It's, really, it's, like, it? it's like I said. Is he went out and actually chased? And actually did it. Yeah. yeah, he chased it. If you get what I mean, he was. Yeah. He was. He, because having that break is is what you need. You need that break to to um, and to be fair, I I I don't sit on my ass all day. Yeah, uh, you know I do do that, and I have uh, contacted area to I think could help me move forward in a similar way to to, the, to what you're mentioning, um, but nothing really has come out of it yet. Yeah. So, you know. It's just slow process, but Barry Smith says he um, he likes my um, blogs on accessibility, so that's good. And well, all I need to do is find other people, other people like Barry who 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 will find it useful, and they can sub to my channel. Um, and this is what I'm after: is trying to find the area where I can I mean, I promote my channels on social media and everything and uh, everybody i talk to is probably sick of me telling them about it but you know this is the only way that you get any any sort of recognition do you mean do you mean nick freeman is the question 
Uh, no, no, no. He's. Uh, I, I won't mention his name because um, I don't know whether he you know, be talked about or not. But it's it's not him now. <laughs> okay, that's good. Do you know anything about? Um, because you're not really a creator. Do you know anything about anything to do with uh, Tube Buddy or anything along those lines or Sub for Sub? Have you heard of that? Oh, is that the? Um... Uh, I'm guessing here, but is that where if you sub to me, I'll sub to you, sort of thing? Yeah, sub for sub, and then tube tube buddy is an add-on thing, um, which gives you loads of added added services for your YouTube channel, uh, as chats and things. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah, it's um, it's it's like an analytics thing, isn't it? That's how they sell it. Yes, it? Yeah. Uh, there is. And also, there's another one called VidIQ as well, which is uh, very similar. Uh, why I mention those is because the other part of my channel today, my my live stream, I was just going to mention these because there's a very interesting thing that came up. Um, and you know, it's like we're, we're talking about being creators here and how we promote our channels. How, and you've had some really good ideas. And along those lines is the the people that focus on doing sort of self help videos where they're saying if you do this then you'll get that sort of attitude you know so if you want to get more subs you need to do this and yeah. X Y and Z so there's a guy called Daryl Eaves now he's quite a big YouTube and he's actually YouTube certified so I, I have no idea what that means but you know, he's been around for a little while and he's got loads of these videos out and I've watched a few of them and I think yeah all right I'll follow but I'll follow the I'll follow the guidance and see what happens anyway one of them um, he made was about tube buddy and this was in October Two years ago, so 2015. Now I discovered it, but obviously I watched his video where he was saying how wonderful this was. Chew buddy this, chew buddy that, and I was thinking, oh okay. Well, he has just confirmed to me that I need to get it, so I did. I got it free of charge, unless you want to have um, the premium uh, stuff to go with it. And you, you obviously have to pay for that. Okay. Um, it's a good job I didn't pay because actually then I found out that it's actually against the terms and conditions of YouTube and you can have your, your channel closed down. So I, I'm, I have a bit of a problem with this in the fact that the guy is promoting something that is actually going to get your channel closed down. Well, if, you, if you're a creator just beware that some of the advice that you're hearing isn't right yeah well, and, I, um, I, think, I think i think you know the thing is is like as the majority uh, well not the majority but a large portion of 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 the of of the content out there that gives you advice that is that kind of self help stuff is you know it, it it's the old sort of way of um give them give them just enough information to kind of get them interested to wet their lips uh, you know so they can so they can go forward and make a purchase and buy what you need them to buy whether that's through an affiliate link or something like that and i i mean that's just the old way that that that's just one way that's just a way that people make money i mean i don't have, i don't particularly have a problem with it I, i've done it myself in the past i'd be i'd be a liar if i say that i hadn't um i mean i think the only thing is the, the, the thing that I've realized as I've got older in life is that, you know, when you look at, look at the most successful people on YouTube, what are they doing? And most of it is just content. 99% yeah. of it is content. Now I think that's not to say that I think you should, you should go and, um, you know, look at somebody, I, I don't know. I never know how to pronounce his name. Is it PewDiePie or something like that? Pie or, yeah. or Casey needs that. Yeah, I look at Casey needs that quite often. I don't think you should look at those guys and say, right, I, I'm going to emulate what they do, 
because I think no. it's like I think it's like that's like turning around and saying, "Oh, I want to be um, Usain Bolt." You get what I mean? It's yeah. it's not it's not going to happen. Um, but I think what you can say is, "What is he doing? What are they doing that I'm not doing?" You know, what are they doing? <laughs> what doing? happens then? Okay, you say that right, but I I I've got five hundred and whatever is you know videos out on my in my back catalog. There's there's hundred. I've you know I've got five hundred of. Um, you know, I'll be going officially it'd be going for a year and a bit um so i produced a hell of a lot of content and some some of the other stuff okay okay you could probably argue that Stars was not 100 percent brilliant it was down to the equipment and i was learning on the job i actually quite happy with all the recent stuff that i've done within the last six to eight months i think it's been High, high quality even if i say it myself it's, it's high quality um barry says you're breaking up bad here can anyone let me know if it's me or if i need to leave and come back i think um barry i was having trouble with listening to jamie but oh it's me is it all right so maybe i'm talking too loud okay i'll move the mic <laughs> now i mean one of the things that i'd say is that and, I, and I'm not saying that you do this particularly. I just think this is something that is that you were talking about psychology earlier. Yeah. Right. And um, I, I, I am, I am the biggest armchair psychologist you will ever meet in your life. Right. I, I love psychology and I think it's, it's always fascinated me how um, people react to certain things and certain ways of saying things. And your one of the things that I would say is that definitely what YouTubers don't do. And if you look at Simon, he does this. I think he does it without realizing it. There's no bump. There's no nonsense. He gets straight to the. He gets straight into what he's doing. Yeah. And when you think about, you know, I know from a landing page design and stuff like that. Yeah. I I've got about four seconds to actually grab that person's interest. That's that's what the stats are, that people bounce onto a page. You've got about four seconds before they press the back button. So that headline needs to make a difference. It needs to grab their interest like that. Now, I think a YouTube video is very similar. I think you've got to grab my interest in the first couple of seconds because there is way too much going on around you not to click on something else. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, and, and that's I think that first that first minute minute and a half of your video of any, of anybody's video is probably one of the most important bits you need to grab my interest at that point and and I, and I think there's a lot of people who don't do that a lot of people who can kind of it's almost like the warming up to the good stuff hit me with the good stuff straight away yeah you know I mean Barry says clickbait, Andy. You need more clickbait. <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that's true. I don't think clickbait works. I think clickbait works in the short term, and I also think I think Google's really good at figuring out clickbait as well. Um, I I think what you you know um, what what have I been doing recently is is so you know the little bell thing. And it pops up the notifications. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people understand that. I, no, I don't, and they've changed it, haven't they? So it's really so. Like, if I was doing YouTube videos, I would actually make a little video showing somebody else to do that, and I'd stick it on the end of every one of my videos. That's a good point. Yeah, you know, um, there's a, there's a great book in in web design, but it's it's actually about usability. Uh, and it's called Don't Make Me Think, right? And it's the best book ever written on usability on the internet. It, it is quite old now, but it's still so relevant. And and what it's about is it's about don't make me actually think about things. So, like, perfect example of that in, in my line of work is uh, a lot of people on there, if you think about the menus at the top of their websites, they'll put home, about, contacts, stuff like that. 
All right, what does that mean? Tell me what it means. Oops. Tell me what it means. You get what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of about what? You know, about me, so about the website. You know, which direction are you taking this? Is it personal? Is it is it corporate? You know, wh- how are you actually mm. describing that? So if it's a, you know, if it's about, um, I don't know, if it's about Eon, the power company, it's about Eon, or it's about yeah. our directors or whatever. You get what I mean? It's about Andy. So I suppose what you're saying is being more precise on on the actual. Uh, Be specific. Because obviously, very much. Yeah, specific. So because you obviously bearing in mind that you only have a certain time to. To catch them, <laughs> and you're fired. Oh, thanks, Simon. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and I mean, the other thing, the other thing is as well is that um, I was just trying to think of what I re- I read something recently on YouTube on on how the algorithm actually works on YouTube, and mm. I think that plays a massive part in what you're actually doing. But, isn't that isn't that one of those mystical things that nobody will understand or know? Well, the the thing is, is a lot of people right. So there's a lot of salesmen out there who sell it like that, right? I've got I've got the magic source to the magic algorithm, but the truth of it is, is you can figure out a lot of it, right? And once again, it's about being specific. So this is why I talk about clickbait is, yeah, clickbait works in the short term. It always has, right? It used to work before video was the big thing and web pages. Used to, that's what we used to do with web pages. We used to put clickbait all over them. Mm. You know, um, seven reasons Britney Spears will do such and such, which had nothing to do with Britney Spears, and he didn't have seven reasons either. But it got a lot <laughs> of hit. Yeah? So, so, that's, so the thing is, is what you need to do is if you want longevity, if you play the game right, I absolutely guarantee Google will make you shine in the end. Google, Google. if you go onto Google's corporate site and go and look at their uh, com- – it's not – they don't call it company rules. They call it something else, company mottos or company charter or something like that. And one of their belief systems, and, and it is actually what they did, is if you build a great product, the profit will, will follow yeah and that's the best it it took me a long time to learn that but once i actually got my own mindset into that i actually did quite well and by producing really good stuff i've i've done all right over that and and that's what i would say to anybody in a um creative situation is is have a look at those rules have a look how google thinks forget the salesman go and look how google thinks and then emulate that in your own stuff. It's good, good advice. Um, Simon says keywords, and Alex Irvin, in regards to the bell, you have to click it twice so that it rings to receive all notifications. Yeah, well, that's that, that's right, Alex. But what I, what I would say is that there's, if you said that to my dad, he'd be saying, "Where's the bell?" <laughs> Right, I absolutely. In fact, he'd be saying, "How do you turn the monitor on?" Right, that you'd be amazed <laughs> at the amount of technical out there. So it's like, once again, don't make me think. Show me how to do it in a little video at the end of every one of yours. I must, I must say that that is a really good idea, and I'm going to be doing that. I think that's, that's an excellent idea. And I, as you say, I don't know anybody else that's doing that. So that could be, that could be a viral video, I reckon. Even if you did it like as a, a learning a online training thing, it's, here's YouTube, here's what to do, sort of. A video. So, um, can I put a link in that chat? Will it do it? I think so. We'll try it. No, won't let me do it. If you click it three times, you get to the end. Boom, boom. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Um, I don't know. Are you on? Let me see whether I can figure out how to use this thing. You see it? So on on the on on the idea of um, videos, then, and you know, you know for well that my uh, 
um, my channel, my travel channel area has different themes. So gastronomic gaffes, uh, national trust, uh, days out, things like this, all different sort of genres of, of travel. They all have their own identity by having their own intro. So just going back to what you said about, you know, keeping it into the getting into the idea of the video straight away how would you sort of overcome the problem of having id because i like the idea of having these identities um well does it as part of it, the video so uh, i think if i remember rightly i got this off a company called wistia which is a video hosting platform that they're for like um corporate videos and stuff like that they're really good actually if anybody's thinking of doing that sort of thing um i'll get andy to link it up underneath with an affiliate link for andy okay yeah. um right it's uh so wistia is a video is a video uh, hosting platform and they have a university on there which you can go and listen to their videos it's all about lighting um cameras uh, how to do it cheap and expensively but one of it is, I'm pretty sure this is where it came from, is they give you this is how to do a YouTube video. And what they say is they say the first um, minute or minute and a half or something like that should be you actually saying this is what's coming up in this video. So if you think about, so if, if you think your video, so let's pretend your video is you going out for a Thai meal, yeah? And so the first minute of your video, should you actually be uh, narrating? So do it at your desk, not in not in front of the camera, not vlogging or anything like that. I'd actually do it at your desk and say, coming up in this video is uh, this Tom Yam soup, maybe a little video of the Tom Yam soup and, and these things are this and whatever else. And I'll tell you about this and that and whatever else. So, so I know mm. this video is going to be interesting to me, so I'm going to watch it right yeah whereas if you're just sitting there going i've just ordered tom yam soup i'm kind of like well oh do you get what i mean it's kind of <laughs> tell me give me give me a yeah. reason to stay here give me tell me why i should stay here coming up coming mm -hmm. up at the end of this video i'll be telling you about this how many times have you heard people say that coming up at the end of this video is x there's a reason they do it it's because it makes you stay at the end yeah right? And I know, so I know in terms of like the gastronomic gaff thing that I do, I'm going into the say I'm going into the restaurant and all of this business. So even before I get there, I'm doing I'm doing like an intro into I'm going so I could even do my intro that's on the video even before that video starts. Yeah, look at look how the TV, you know you don't watch when you watch uh, uh, Top Gear or something like that. That's a very popular program, is or it used to be. Um, you know, <laughs> right at the start of it, even that. Let's be honest, they they used to muck around on it and all the rest of it. Jeremy Clarkson always used to say, "Coming up in this show, X Y Z," didn't he? That was the opening yeah. of every show, and I'm pretty sure the Grand Tour is exactly the same. Well, that's what you should be doing. I'll just. I think I can do this. I'm not exactly sure whether I'm a, I'm allowed to do it, but um, I'll share. Can you see this document? Right. So this is yeah. this is a company called Mars, which is M O Z dot com, and uh, it oh. right. And what it is is it's YouTube ranking factors, and it's Whiteboard Friday. So like basically they'll go through. A load of things that tell you how this actually how youtube algorithm actually works right now the this company used to be called seo moz and they used to they are the um the premier as far as i'm concerned in s in search engine optimization information so what they're telling you is the real deal yeah so I would I would listen to those videos. I'd read those articles. I'd also read the comments because you often find there's a lot of people in there who know even more than they do, right? But it's where that industry 
It's where that search industry shares all its stuff, and 99% of it's free. What do they mean by in, inbound links? What was that? Because I so, don't quite understand that. Yeah, so an inbound, an inbound link is, so um, if, if I have a website and I link to your video or I put your video on my website, that's another way of doing it, or, or the link coming from my website to your website or to your YouTube page. That's how Google search algorithm works. So are they saying that the more places you put your video links, so like so yeah, it does it, um, the better. Yeah, it does, but don't turn it into spam. So so like if I go out and I just yeah. say this YouTube video, I go out, I just get the, the link for the video and I just literally hit every forum in town. Um, every whatever, you know, just spam it all over the place. Yeah, make a Wikipedia page, the lot, you know, really go to town on it, right? Um, it'll just get marked up as spam, right? And then mm. none of it counts. So the, I don't want to get, it's, it's a difficult subject, this, but the, the more authoritative the page, the better the link, right? So if you got a link from somebody like BP, that would be better than getting a link from Simon because BP, Google knows BP is a reputable company. That website's probably been there for 10 or 15 years. They know they know they do, you know, they know what they do. They're, they're, they're an organization, yeah? So some of the most powerful links you can get, this is why, this is why Wikipedia is always number one because who links to Wikipedia? you know scientists linked to wikipedia right yeah. so, so so they're all so all the links are coming from education sites and things like that so what i would do is is it, it, it's very hard to do that but don't spam because that that's worse very very interesting that number three is social shares rather than the inbound links so there must be a difference between the two then yeah so um uh let me just uh Let's just see. Am I back? <laughs> You're back. I'm, I'm back. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, well, the thing is, is if you share something on Facebook, right? So if I made, so look at it this way, right? If I made a, a really crappy video about me sitting at home playing guitar badly, would you share that with the people on Facebook? Yeah. No, you wouldn't share it. So the thing is, is Google knows that things have been shared that on Facebook are probably reasonably good. Barry says, sharing is caring. If others share, it should be worth watching. Quite true. So that's why you need to get your, your friends and associates to share it. If you, if you read that, if you go onto that um, moz, uh, moz.com and you have, a, mm. you have a good little uh, afternoon with that over there, then uh, I absolutely guarantee you will learn a lot. They, they've got a, um, um, they've got a search engine optimization basic guide. Start with that. Have, yeah, a, read, have a read of that. Um, it's it's quite easy to read through. That'll give you your basics, and then have a look on their site for YouTube stuff, and you'll learn all sorts of things on there. Have another look. Have a look at Wisteria as well. Uh, Wistia, Wistia, video host. Wistia. They they make some good stuff on how to actually make your the con uh, sorry the quality of your video really good. Yeah. So the idea. Um, do you think that um, paid promotion, or, say for social media, do you think that's worth doing? Um, I mean, I wouldn't myself. I mean, the thing is, is unless you've got something to sell. Right, I wouldn't pay to be promoting myself. That's that's the way that I see it. So if 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 you and Simon were actually selling a product, if you and Simon were selling, um, I don't know, um, I don't, know, I, I can't really think. Tins of spam. Yeah, if you were selling tins of spam, right, then yeah, you can make a calculation of right these these tins of spam cost was ten p to produce. We can obtain customers at um, a pound per click because that's how much it costs to get 
you know, out of every cost is 10p every time we get a customer and it costs us a pound to get one. So that means we're spending that, that customer's worth a pound to us. So then you can make an estimation and say, right, we're going to sell a spam for two pound and we'll make a profit if that's the case. But if you haven't got a profit to sell, then I wouldn't be paying for anything. The best business, the best businesses are lean businesses. You, 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 you uh, I, I, I spent, I, I probably spent in excess of a hundred thousand pounds setting up businesses, um, on the attitude of yes, I'll just, just do it, just spend it. And it wasn't until I learned how to keep my own money in my pocket that I actually started earning some. Took yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Took quite a while to learn that. <laughs> Well, I, I must say I haven't learned it after like maybe 40 years. So, you know, there'll be a long learning process for me. <laughs> Barry says uh, he has no friends. Oh, Barry, you have got friends. I'm your friend. <laughs> um, so, yes, I mean, that's really helpful, Jamie. That's really useful stuff. I think I, what I might try is a little bit of an experiment with the idea of the video intro and, and trying to change it around to see if it makes any, any difference. Mm. Um, I'm not quite sure how to keep the identity of, of important anymore. I don't, I, don't think, I think one of the things that you are verging on, I'm not saying you're doing it yet, but you are verging on it and you've got to be careful of this, is do not, do not distribute your eggs too much, right? Do not try and splinter off into doing 15 diff. You know, a, a guy once said to me, because like I can, I can draw and I can, I can, I can develop as in code. Yeah. But I'm probably better at code than I am at drawing. I'm, I'm fairly good at both, but I'm probably better at code than I am at, at drawing at front. What's known as front end stuff. And, this guy turned around to me and he said, do you know what you want to do? You want to concentrate on being good at one thing and instead of trying to be concentrate on being good at everything. And when I took that, when I took that advice and just concentrated on that one thing, I started to make money. That's when it started to click for me. And, and that's what I do with you is I would say, be careful about creating lots of different channels with lots of different subjects is I just try and, you know, the first thing you need to do, the first thing any creator needs to do, and it's the same thing with websites, is I, you know, um, how can I explain this? You know, when you built Simon's site, who did you ask what it needed for? What was the need for it? The need for it was to promote his... Um, what's it got to do with him? Know, what he does. Yeah, no, but what's it got to do with him? How do you mean I don't? Right. Understand if, a website, yeah. a website, or any product serves the customer. It doesn't serve the user. And it's the same thing with your videos. Your videos don't serve you; they serve your viewer. Right. You've got to figure out, and or any YouTube creator is going to figure out what do they want, and then concentrate on it like crazy. Now, if that's food, that's great. If that's going to castles, I watched you go to a castle the other day. I thought that was really good. You know, if it's that mm. stuff, great. If it's Thailand, it's Thailand. But it's kind of what you're doing is you're kind of being all right at everything. And what I'd say is mm. become really good at one thing. We just just be oh, yeah. just nail that one thing and and just own it. And and it's all about you. Yeah, the, I see what you're saying with that, and I can understand what you're saying with the idea of having. The, the multiple sort of oh it's like this channel area is uh then i've got online training and i've got uh health and i've got you know travel and you know originally the idea was i was going to split everything up and i was going to have half a dozen channels and just have one channel for one thing and having started the process of doing that, I mean, I do have six channels. I haven't updated any of them because in the end, I decided that it was too complicated and too much work 
to maintain so they've all come back onto this one channel but I've, i'm trying to get this identity particular aspect now what you're telling me is that you need to focus on the one thing that you're good at and that is probably travel but the problem is that becomes very very samey very very boring at the moment i'm doing Edit so I've done editing for the last two weeks. I've edited like maybe 50 videos, and for me, that's become really, really mundane. And really, I've lost the inspiration to create videos. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is um, let me just look this up because I don't want to quote the guy wrong. Right, so um, I'm trying to remember the guy who wrote this book. I think it's Mal. I think yeah, it's Malcolm Gladwell. I thought it was Malcolm Gladwell. So there's a book. There's a book called Outliners by by um, Michael, Malcolm Gladwell, who wrote. You need to do something for ten thousand hours before you become an expert in it. Right mm. now, and it's pretty true. The weird thing is it's really it is actually true if you look at people who are you know if you look at casey neistat and add up all his videos i bet he's done about ten thousand hours it's weird how it kind of fits yeah. this this yeah. this peak of success so the thing is is it doesn't matter how boring it is you know if you don't think that i sit here looking at code going jesus i've had enough of this did you get what i mean it's kind of that's going to happen you've got you've just got to be you've just got to go through that pain barrier and keep going until you get what you want. You know, that's how you get things that you want in life. There's, it's never going to be nothing. Nothing easy is worth having. No, you know, but I think there's, I think there's, I think there's some basic rules that you can stick to, um, you know, health, wealth, what is it? Health, wealth, and well being will always make money. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, when you look at what what's the highest selling products on the internet, dietary products, any day of the week, they make more money than everything else. Yeah. So when you look at yourself, the other yeah. day you were talking about the oil, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. No, I double checked that that is actually legal before going into anything like this. But as a disabled person, um, I imagine that um, there is aches and pains that you get that other people who are in your position also get yeah right well that's that's a massive niche that is a that is, that is just pure money waiting to be come and got you get what i mean and for me I do, if, yeah. I, if i got up and said well you know this all this oil will help your back or these these supplements or these vitamins or this cream or whatever will help your back people go well how does he know he's how does he know <laughs> When it comes from you well it's it's obviously right or wrong isn't it you get what i mean mm. and you yeah. can be, yeah, and yeah. be honest about it you know um i think i think that's what that's what you've got to get if you want to earn money at doing this then that's the direction you need to go you need to think what earns money if you want to do it as a love of life if you want to do it just because you enjoy it then that's a different thing altogether all that, yeah, all, that, all, that, all, that, all that thing about following your passion is nonsense. It is nonsense. It's yes. just nonsense. nonsense. Mm. I don't believe in that at all. You have to in, you have to enjoy it to a certain degree, and it has to be, you know, that way. But in the end, um, I never put out a video that I'm not happy with. If I did, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it anymore because I think that if I if I wouldn't watch it, then nobody else will watch it yeah i think you've got to be careful with that as well though because like i i i am definitely i have definitely got a perfectionist gene in me um which has held me back in so many things in life of just being scared to do it just being scared to just uh, put it out in front of other people and and it, and it still holds me back now I, you know i'm kind of preaching i should be preaching this to myself not to you but it's kind of like <laughs> um i i i think you've got to be careful with that what, what was it somebody said somebody said to me um um 
what is it? Uh, good is better than. Sorry, um, I think it's done is better than good. It, what is it? Good is better than done or something like that. It's it, I can't remember the saying, but it basically means if you're going to wait until it's per good. Uh, released is look at it this way released is better than perfect yeah it's better you know there's there's a thing called um not to get all psychological here but like there is a thing in psychology called uh, the the power of persuasion have you ever read that by dr I have, no. right so this this shit will blow your mind do you ever watch darren brown yeah Right, and and Darren Brown, he does that stuff where like he just gets people to do things for him instantly. Yeah, right. With this yeah. is what it, this is how he's doing it. He's doing it with a thing called neuro linguistic programming, right, which is used in advertising all the time. Right. Mm. If you look on YouTube, you can actually if you search for neuro linguistic programming and type in something like Pepsi, the Pepsi logo is actually shaped in a way that is sexually suggested. Right, yes, and that is part of this, right? Lady of Pots. Now, one of the things, uh, so the six, the six things of, uh, six methods of persuasion, and I'll just, I'll just read some of these to you. Reciprocity, which uh, for the, for the, I'm sure everybody knows what it means, but that basically means if I do something for you, you feel like you owe me, right? Yeah, and a, and a, and a, and a very famous experiment was done with this in america where they sent 600 christmas cards to people out of the phone book that he did not know and he got back about 80 percent saying and you know saying oh yeah great christmas yeah i hope you and your family are fine right because people felt like they owed him something for sending them a christmas mm. card commitment and consistency so when you think about youtube if you have a week off if you don't publish that week because it wasn't quite good enough, it wasn't just there, just where you wanted it to be, what you've actually done is committed a mortal sin in actually getting somebody to be a subscriber. You've got to push it out. You've got to do it. And if that means it isn't 100% perfect, if it's 90% there, do it. Push that button. Mm -hmm. um, social proof. Social proof means that if other people like you, if other people are talking about you then other people then other people as well will join in on that so you see this on websites a lot where they turn around and have testimonials on there that's yeah social pr that's social yeah. proof that's why they do it liking so you've got to be a likable character which you are so i wouldn't worry about that one too much you got it nailed <laughs> right <laughs> you got to be an authority which means you got to be a leader right um don't be scared. And what that means is don't be scared to be opinionated. If somebody says something you don't agree with, say, I don't agree with that. Nothing wrong. There's, there's nothing wrong in debate. There's, there's something wrong with arguments. You know, me and you politically do not agree. But we can have a conversation. Do you get what I mean? Why is that, why is that then, Jamie? Because you like Jeremy <laughs> Corbyn, right? And, and the other one, the final one is scarcity. Now, scarcity is... Uh, you will often see this on infomercials of a night. If you ring up now, we will give you a, a second one for free. Mm. We can't do this offer for more than 30 days. How often do you see that? That's scarcity in play. Now, applying some of those things to your YouTube videos, I absolutely guarantee will get you more viewers. If you look yeah. at, at what Casey Neistat's doing, all the camera and the music and the destinations and all that kind of stuff, none of that really matters. What he was doing when he was doing it was he was posting a video every single day. That's the one thing he was doing. He wasn't using technology. He was just posting a video every day. And I know, yeah. that, I know that from blogging. I used to run quite a big blog about, I don't know, it was about four or five, well, it was probably longer, it was about six years ago. And... Our readership went through the roof when we posted every single day. Originally, we were posting once. Well, we were lucky if you got one month out of us when we first started. Then it went to one a week, and then we went to one a day. And when we went to one a day, it went through the roof. And I, I do mean hundreds of thousands of people were reading it.
So that's that consistency. Mm. I'm not saying you've got to do it every day, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying if you turn around and say that you're going to post all, every other day, I'd do it every other day. And nothing should get well, I'm already up to, um, I'm already up to three times a week regularly. Um, my schedule, actually, you're talking about uh, earlier on about when if you don't feel like it or it's not perfect. Actually, I've got no worries on that because my schedule is planned. Uh, I'm working actually on August now. So we've got July mm. and August uploaded ready to go. So it, it's not a case of not having the stuff out there trying to get the customers to come and look at it and, and yeah, watch well, it well, well tell them like i say don't make me think right at the end of your videos at the start of your videos turn around and say yeah i post every tuesday wednesday and thursday or whatever it may be you get what i mean say yeah. it in the intro of every video until it gets in people's heads then they'll turn around it it's like it's a bit like uh, I, I don't watch every youtube video that comes out on thailand but i I pretty much know Kev's going to post on a Saturday. He usually posts. Yeah. I, I usually kind of, I get up quite early, me, but like by the time I'm actually coming to life in my chair, he sometimes, that's usually when the video hits. Now, he hasn't told me that, but I've just noticed it. And it makes me think I want to go and watch that YouTube video might be up. So I would turn around and say, tell people, if they ain't getting it, tell them. Because that's one thing that I haven't, I've noticed that you just said it, that I don't actually do that at all. See? Say that again. I said that's one thing that I've noticed that you, you just, I don't do, I don't, I don't mention um, when they're out. I don't say like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't actually, I've never said it on a video. Yeah, I, well, I would. That's what I, I would, I would make a plan of whatever it is you want to do, whether that's the one you've got now or whether you want to change it in some way, shape, or form, and then I'd put it out. And what I'd also do is, you know, on the days you're not posting, make something or nothing. So a perfect example of that is, say you were going to do your live streams on a Saturday, yeah, is I would post, and you're not going to post anything on Friday, I would post a little video, like a two-second thing, that said the subjects that we're going to talk about tomorrow are this give me a reason to come on saturday right yeah. you know when you look at the bbc uh, you know it doesn't do advertising does it but it still advertises its own programs constantly i mean it, you know it's becoming a little bit annoying to be perfectly honest so the thing is is like there's a reason they're doing that it's because it increases viewership yeah that's a good point actually i like that Simon just said that uh, I post every day, he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I don't know if I do or not. And uh, Barry says that he thinks that uh, the common link will be accessibility, which is quite true, because uh, that was my original aim anyway. Ability. I I would um I would also uh you know, one of the things that is popular, if you look on those kind of videos, is those behind the scene things. Mm. They're massive when you look at the viewership of them. So if you are, so like that castle the other day that you went to, if you make a little two minute sort of thing going, oh yeah, I'm just packing up the car, getting ready to go to the castle, uh, Carnarvon Castle, video will be out in a couple of days. You give me, you give me a reason to go and check your channel. Yeah. Ah. Page views mean something. So they're not just playing a video, but actually landing on your page. Google looks at that and says, this page is busy. Why is it busy? Why is there a lot of people going on it and checking it every five minutes? Yeah, that's a good point. Please view after stream. And there's a link on the bottom of the chat if you want to go and have a look at that. Everybody, um, yeah, I've already, I've already had a look at that, Simon. I'd look earlier. <laughs> what is it? Um, what is it, Simon? Is it gonna... See, now, you should have been on here, Simon. Have... I know your wife's naked and running around the house and that, but I'm sure nobody would mind. So I think that you've got some good ideas there, Jamie. I think, uh... no, it's not new. I don't know what I'm looking at. 
I will. Anyway, so I think there's some really, really useful ideas. And even if you're watching this later um, and you just come on there, think what the heck are they talking about? Some really good stuff. Um, we, we started earlier today the idea of talking about being considerate and consideration and manners, and then we moved on. Uh, and it's all linked with are you reading this? Um, Andy, sign up, Jamie, as a regular guest. Yeah, so very good point. I think if he wants, if he wants the job, then he's more than happy to come on and have a chat with me. And uh, even though he doesn't like Corbyn, <laughs> <laughs> hire him quick. Now it's like so, it's like it's like I say that 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 I think the big one the big one that everybody's missing is is the podcasting, that that's the big thing. yes. Um, so how how would how would you say that if 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 I was if I was going to do that how would you say that I I should proceed? Right. Well, podcasting. So YouTube is the biggest. Everybody thinks Google is the biggest search engine in the world, but it's actually not. YouTube is right you there's more content on youtube than there is search uh, there's more searches happen on youtube than there are on google now um but one of the other biggest search engines is itunes okay okay so uh, and i do mean there are phenomenal amounts of people on itunes who regularly listen to something um now i sit here constantly designing websites and all i've got going on the other screen over there is podcasts right some of them are video okay. some of them are audio and and it's really it's just producing a a radio show now the way that you do it um if you so let's pretend you were going to interview uh who's somebody who's abroad who's somebody who's in thailand uh kev kev right so we're going to interview kev right so the problem the problem is is um even google hangouts is great it's fine it's great and it is pretty good but the problem is is even in thailand in certain areas the um the internet is terrible right so what you do is you you ask kev to film to set up his camera and film the podcast with the mic plugged into his camera, right? And to record it on his D DL, what is it, DLSR or whatever they're called, yeah? Those yeah, things. DSLR, yeah. Yeah, them things. Yeah. So ask him to record his half of the conversation. You record your half of the conversation on your, your good camera, and you do the conversation through, um, uh, through Hangouts, and then what you ask Kev to do is to upload his one to a Dropbox, and then you edit them together. And ah. that, way, that way, what you end up with is crystal clear audio and visual. And you put it together like that. Now, the thing is with podcasts, you will. Podcasts are, the, the, the difference I would say in between what you've been doing and podcasts is there's a lot more editing in podcasts because people go off on one right you can bring up <laughs> you can bring up certain subjects and they can just go on one right and uh often what happens is you can end up with people turning around and going you know that bit where i was on about jeremy corbyn you better take that out you know what I mean? it's kind of <laughs> it's and then yeah. you'll, you'll have to cut out that that sort of five minutes that you've done so there's a bit of editing involved in it um itunes is fairly easy to use uh, you want a pc yeah yeah <clears throat> so there's a thing called um or oh, let me think what it's called hold on or das audacity or something like that i think it's called oh i've got that yeah. i've got audacity so yes yeah. audacity so one of the one of the things i think somebody mentioned it before i have to turn it down when andy's on you said you have to turn yeah. your videos down, right? Well, the reason yeah. is for that is there's a thing called um, normalize, normalizing audio, 
which is basically so say I say you've got a really cracking mic and my mic's really rubbish, or I'm using I'm using one of these headset things or something like that. Um, what what happens is you end up with different audio levels. So normalize mm. audio it 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 flattens the audio so it's all one level, and then you add that now. So you you've got to become reasonably skilled at that stuff. But being honest, right, it's not hard. If, no. you, if you, it's not hard. And what I would also do is I would limit. Um. So Simon, I think it was did Simon do a live stream with quite a few people on it the other day? Was that yeah, Simon? Did, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, that went reasonably well, and I was surprised. Yeah, because most of them that I've seen where there's more than two or three people on it, it's a complete, it just disastrous because everybody just starts talking over everybody. It goes completely pear-shaped. Uh, I wouldn't do that on your podcast. What I would do is I would have, I would have three people, I would probably have about two interviewers and an interview and the person you're interviewing. I'd plan it like crazy before I started. So I'd have actual bullet points that I'm going to touch on and then, and then that's how I'd produce it is like that. I, I did podcast them for quite a while. And I got I got to number one and it was spot on. So you got the um Yeah, but you see when you interview people it's different because you have to you have to research that person, right? Mm. So what that means is you've got to spend the best part of the day actually going through Kev's videos and trying to find things that you think people are going to be interested in. So um Yeah. Uh, now the great thing is about podcasting and interviewing people is there's a thing called um uh do you know Gary V? You ever seen him? No, no, I know. Gary V is like he was he was one of the first people. He didn't he wasn't one of the first people in social media. Social media was going long before he was going, but he was one of the first people to kind of utilize it in a business and publicity way. Yeah. And one of the things that he said in one of his books was, don't be the record, be the DJ in a marketplace. And he's absolutely, that is, that is one of the smartest things ever said about, about social media and YouTube and things like that. Even that you're the person doing the interviewing, yeah. because you're associating yourself with other authorities like Kev, whoever else, Simon, whoever else who might be out there, yeah? Because you are the DJ, you automatically become an authority, right? It's association. Yeah. So the thing is, is that that then drives your channel up. There used to be a business site that I can't I can't remember the name of right now, um, of a guy who used to interview authors of books. And he had, so people like Tim Ferriss and people like that, pop, very popular authors, people who had bestsellers. He had far more followers than Tim Ferriss ever had. Just by right. just by being the interviewer, and and that's yeah. that's the way to do it. That's that's what I'd do. Uh, it's been crossing my mind whether to do it, but it's uh, it's definitely something I'd do. Simon says, "Can uh, how can he turn his uh, stories into cast?" But then he said, um, "Basically, he can't edit, so it'll be no good for him." Now I tell you, I tell you, I tell you something that I would do with Simon. Said, "Look at me, just I'm just railing on what everybody else should do. Everybody else should do this, and I I should just sit here and tell you. Yeah, you don't need <laughs> to do yourself, do you? No, <laughs> I just just telling everybody else what to do. Now the the thing is, is like uh, one of the things that I reckon. So I was toying with this idea about two years ago. Um, there's a. So you know when you get a comedian. So if you think of like Billy Connolly or somebody like that, yeah. So Billy Connolly yeah. has has these sort of sets, and I, I don't want to get rude here, but there's one where he goes to Spain, and he drinks spat. His, his son replaces the water in the bottle for Spanish. He drinks the water out the fridge, and then he fills it up from the tap, and everybody drinks the water, and all of them end up with the trots, right? And it's yeah. really it's hilariously funny, and um. What I thought would be brilliant is if you just got little, um, little, little sort of sections of, of people's comedy thing like that, and then turn them into animations. I don't know if you ever saw Ricky Gervais did it. So you know that you know that you know that really dumb guy who's on Sky with Ricky Gervais. 
idiot travels yeah. the world or something like that. They did it with him, and 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 basically they turned it into an animation. And Simon's stories would fit that perfectly. They oh, would that's fit. And there is actually some anima animation software. Yes, on, we're playing around with it today. I think it's called. I think it's actually called Animate. But um, anyway, there's some animation software that has kind of. Um, it's it's reasonably easy to use. I would go and hire somebody off Upwork who can do that, right? For you know, go and hire a Filipino for like, uh, um, go and hire a Filipino for like ten dollars or something an hour or whatever it may be. Yeah. Get them to make animation videos and then do it for Land of Smiles. The um, Simon says, "Have you seen the link that he put on there? Because that is exactly." what we were playing around with today that he made a little um, animation of well it wasn't him but it was um, him saying to me uh, uh like a little video so all oh, right it's actually, it's I, actually actually coincidental that you mentioned that yeah i'm trying to see if i can find the um software that done it Let me just see. Yeah, I haven't got it here. I, I I remember finding it, but it's um. If you if you go, I think it's might be might be Animate Studios or something like that. Anyway, I'd find a decent animation software. I wouldn't use those free ones. They're a load of rubbish. Yeah, I'd find some decent yeah. animation software. Uh, research what the best animation software is. I'd go on Upwork and I'd pay a couple of hundred pounds to actually have somebody just make a couple of videos and I bet you 10 would be go viral. Yeah. That's how I'd do it. Sounds like a plan. Obviously then, you know, you're, you're relying on trying to find somebody who... Uh, I, I suppose it's just like me, really, putting myself on, uh, trying to advertise for work. So there's, there's really lots of people doing that, isn't there? Well, um, yeah, but the, the other thing to remember is, like, that um, uh, – how, how can I explain it? Is this – you know, I, I can draw, but I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a cartoonist. Hmm. Right? So I, I'm going to show you one of these because I've got one – I'm just playing it there. I'll, I'll share it because it could give you an idea of what you're saying is is uh is actually possible yeah let me just share it don't know how how good it's going to be but we'll play it i don't know if it'll play phone ipad windows and uh mac ah that's the that's the one i was that's the one i was thinking of that one? Found it now. yeah I've just, I've, I've just i've just no i've just found the um so uh if you if i share let me just see if i can share this um share application window share So with this stuff, you can just you can take any image or anything, and you can manipulate it so it animate, animates. Now there is a, there is a oh, cost to this. But, so what I would do is um, is I would, I would jump it forward. I mean, it, you know, it's proper manipulation. So if it, if it was me, I would that stuff's called crazy talk. I would mm. um, I would um, I would personally go and find somebody on upwork who can do this stuff and i would get them to make them for me mm. you know don't don't the thing is is don't try and be a, don't try and be an expert in everything it's it's a case of uh, mm. there we go yeah, don't, don't try and be an expert you, in it. yeah because then you sort of end up as you say you sort of end up being master of everything and nothing yeah. at all really is yeah. it a, no volume, Andy? 
No volume. Can that's what it says on so, the thing. Nobody can hear me. Can they hear me? No. I can hear. No. Can you hear? Can everybody can hear Jamie? Can everybody hear Andy? Hello, hello. No. Okay. Are we talking to ourselves? Yeah, probably talking to ourselves. Oh, on the animation. Oh, right. They couldn't hear the volume on. Yeah, I turned it off. That's they why. couldn't hear the sound on. Don't want to get a. No, on my get, one probably. I don't want to get a copyright strike. That's why I turned it off. Your video had no volume, so basically they couldn't hear what it said. But basically, the animation said, "Hello, my name is Andy Wright, and I upload Monday, Wednesday, and Friday." <laughs> So somebody's been busy when I've been talking. Another one is don't be. I mean, like you know, if we, without, you know, I don't want to go into spending loads of money and stuff. But it's like, have, have you guys ever been to? Uh, let me see where it's called here. Um, so another place uh, you might know this one um, is. Have you ever been to Video Hive? um oh right so uh video i think it's video hive yeah let me let me make sure so you know like opening graphics you know like when your show starts so so like i was saying before i would record i upload tuesday wednesday thursdays and whatever else or what you know coming up in this show those sort of things i would do that to some sort of opening animation or something some, like it you know like the start of top gear as cars driving around same thing for you is find something that relates to yourself yeah. right? now well video hive is where you buy that stuff so um there is so if i look on here so like some quite quite uh let me let me see whether i can let me see whether i can find something on here um and then I need to share my screen, don't I? So I'll see if I can share this with you and see if people can see it. I'm not sure they will be able to. Um, so share window, share. So this this is 14, so this is gonna cost like $14, this sort of thing, so this sort of tells you. Ah. Yeah. Now, there's there's thousands on there so you could spend literally all day looking at that stuff yeah uh, i've done that once twice now um if you i'm trying to get my screen back hold on <laughs> there we go uh right so the thing is is you can go on there at, now if you if you talk to the people who make it you can actually talk to the people who've made it yeah and you can say, mm. uh, can you change that text? So it says Andy Wright or whatever. whatever. You, uh, uh, could you put these pictures of food or pictures of disabled visits or, or, or Thailand or whatever you want it to be about, yeah? Can you put these in there? They'll turn around and say, yeah, uh, yeah, give us $30 and we'll do it for you. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So so like it's kind of just for a bit of extra they'll they'll do it for you and you don't have to do it yourself and then what you've got is a montage that you can effectively just change the audio to every time your show starts you get what i mean yeah understand that yeah so you have your, you have your video done and then you could put whether they audio wise you could put anything under it yeah um and that's it. For also, every episode so yeah. that that's actually part of um there's another one so that's video hive. It's part of a, uh, uh, I think it's pronounced a a v a v a vino or veto or something like that. That's uh, there's video hive on there, which is all openers and closers and all those sort of things. And then there's also audio jungle, which is part of the same network. Audio jungles, yeah. you can buy uh, music on there. Now, one of the things that you can do, which I've done in the past, is I've said, uh, I want this opener but I want to set it to this music, bought the two things and then sent them off to the people who created them and said, right, can you change it? Mm. Another cheap way of doing that is to go to Fiverr as well. Have you, do you know the Fiverr site with an R? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You go on there. You've got to be careful on there because you do get some crap as well. 
Mm. I have used the uh, audio jungle and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, there's some, there's some good stuff on audio jungle. What's what I know, I know you, your idea is about not being a specialist of everything, but having your and if you can't. That's not really your thing, graphics and things like that. Then, obviously, you outsource it. Would you, if you had the skill, would you do it yourself? If I had the skill, yeah. I mean, like if I was a if I was a Adobe, if I was Adobe um, effects After Effects, After Effects editor, then yeah, I'd, I'd do it myself. You know, it's like. Um, it's like when when I take a photo. So I mean, I like taking photos. I would say I'm a mild amateur at it. I'm not. I'm not mm. brilliant by any means. If you get what not I mean, not pro, like, not pro. No, and yeah. I only do. And I only do it for his own sort of photo albums. It's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. I don't show it anybody. But I mean, if I go if I go on holiday and I take a picture of something and it comes back and it's I don't know light flared or whatever, um, I would say that you know I'd put it into Photoshop and take that out. So I know yeah, how, sure. I know how to do it. Now, am I going to do it as good as a professional Photoshop expert who all he does is photography? Absolutely not. No way near. I'm not going to get anywhere near that. Simon says uh, he's got to go, and he says goodbye, Jamie, Barry, and everybody else who's watching. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, see you later see you tomorrow. Uh, thanks for moderating. And for your lovely comments, <laughs> have a good evening. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, but leaves it wide open, really. <laughs> uh, right, so yes, I think, um, well, we are on two hours and 15 minutes. So no it's probably going to be about time to wrap it all up. Um, I. That, I want to thank you for coming on, Jamie. It's been a pleasure no talking worries, to you. You've got some really good ideas, and uh, I have them written down. Hopefully, hopefully, I haven't gone off on one. <laughs> no, no, it's been it's been really good, and uh, you get off. You'll get off and go. A lot. You'll get off and be like, God, he's opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't I'm just, does he? <laughs> I just really, really disappointed you don't like Jeremy Corbyn. No, sorry, can't go that far. Definitely can't go that far. <laughs> so I'm going to thank you for coming on. Um, okay. I'm going to say thank you for everybody who's watching. Yep. And it's been a pleasure. And uh, hopefully we will very soon uh, have another subject and discuss that because I think it's nice. Yeah, have a good night. See you later. And Barry says, Barry says, I will leave before being thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting yeah. thrown out, Barry. You're fine. All right. So Jamie. thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for coming. See you, Andy. Bye -bye. Bye. See you, everybody. I'll catch you again very soon. Bye for now. Okay.